Okay, so it's been a week since the election, and things are still seeming pretty crazy, to be honest. A lot of stuff is still up in the air, and I know there's still going to be a lot of court challenges, so we won't really know the final result of what's going on until that's all resolved. And in this video, I'm not going to speculate on any of that. I'm just going to take the results as we have them currently, and analyze a few interesting trends that I think we can see from them. And I'll be working under the assumption that the results we currently have are more or less accurate. And what's interesting from these results is that Trump just totally blew out the polls. Now, this has already been remarked upon quite a bit, but it hasn't really been analyzed in much depth. And I think there's some things that we can see here that really show just how much Trump destroyed the polls. Okay, but before I get into the specifics of this, what's really quite frustrating and confusing is in most countries, polls are actually quite accurate. And I know this because I follow most elections in most Western countries. And in most of the cases, the polls have quite a strong relation to what ends up happening on election day. Now, that doesn't mean that it's uncommon for the conservative party in whatever country to usually get slightly more than the polls. That is a relatively common phenomena, but it's just not anything like what's happening in the US, where Trump does way better than the polls are showing, and this has happened twice now in America. For example, the 2017 French presidential election, the polls were exactly right for the first round. It's a two-round system. And Macron and Le Pen both got almost exactly what the polls said they would get. And this wasn't just one or two polls. As you can see here, all the polls were generally right about what both those candidates would get and what all the candidates really would get in the election. In the second round, the polls actually significantly overestimated the share of vote that Le Pen would get. She was projected in many polls as getting as much as 40% of the vote, when in reality she only ended up getting about 33%. In Germany, in the most recent general election, which was 2017, we see a similar thing where all the parties get more or less what the polls say. The CDU was predicted to get a bit more of the vote than what they ended up getting, but it wasn't really a massive discrepancy. And overall, if you look at all the parties and all the polls, the averages all seem pretty reasonable compared to the results. Again, we see the same pattern in the 2018 Swedish general election, where the results are quite close to the polls. So it's just not right to say that the polls are always wrong everywhere, and that the polls just have no relation to reality. Now, are there exceptions? Yeah, of course. The exception that we know the best is, of course, the Brexit referendum, in which the pro-Remain side seemed like that they were going to do significantly better than they actually ended up doing. But those are the exceptions, and in most places in the West outside of America, the polls seem relatively accurate. But the 2020 election has shown definitively that the polls, currently at least in America, just can't be trusted. And I'll demonstrate this. Now, the first place where we see this very clearly is just the overall general election results. Currently, according to Fox News, the difference in the popular vote between Trump and Biden is that Biden got about 50.8% of the vote, and Trump got about 47.5% of the vote. Just from there, we can see that the polls were pretty awful on the popular vote total, because the average just before the election had Trump at 44%, so he outperformed that by 3.5%. And the averages of these polls has never really put Trump any higher than 44%. So just that alone shows how massively these polls are off. But when you go by a state-by-state -state view, you can see even more how bad these polls were. Florida and Ohio are two states where we can see this pretty clearly. The Real Clear Politics poll average was Biden up 0.9%. Now, okay, 0.9%, that's pretty close, and clearly that meant that the state was a toss-up, according to the polls. So it's not that crazy that Trump won it. I'm sure any of the pollsters would have said, yeah, Florida's clearly in play. But Trump won it by 3.4%. So that's almost a 4.5% difference from what the polls were saying. That's clearly outside of the margin of error. Trump handily won Florida. Ohio's an even clearer example. The average had Trump up 1% there, and he won it by 8.2%. That's a massive difference, 7.2% from what the polls were saying. Now, okay, having one or two states where the average is very different from what the polls were saying isn't that crazy, 
Again, I'm sure any pollster would tell you that it's expected that there's going to be a couple states that are outliers and the polls just weren't able to predict correctly. But the thing is, if you go state by state, you see this again and again and again, and there's even clearer examples. West Virginia and Oklahoma are two good examples to look at because these are deep red states. These are actually some of the most Republican states in the entire U.S., at least when it comes to presidential elections. Both of these states are the only states in the entire union, I believe, where every single county individually goes to the Republicans, not just the entire state. And as you can see, these polls have Donald Trump easily winning the election here. But if you actually compare the polls to the results, you'll notice that there's actually still a very big discrepancy. The polls for West Virginia had Trump up anywhere between 14 and 20 percent, and the polls for Oklahoma had Trump up between 22 and 25 percent. So clear leads, but compared to the results, there's still a very big discrepancy. The most generous poll for Trump in West Virginia had him up 20 percent, which is only about half the lead that he actually ended up getting in West Virginia. And similarly, there's about a 10-point difference between the lead that Trump was projected to get in Oklahoma compared to what he actually got in Oklahoma. The difference here between the polls and the results is insane. It's even bigger than in the swing states. Now, okay, I can anticipate the response that I would probably get for this. People would probably say that these are just states that are totally irrelevant. Everyone knows that Trump is going to win them easily, so there's no point in really caring about the polls, so no one really invested much time or money or effort into trying to get them right. Getting polls right is a difficult process, and though, so no one really cared in these small, relatively irrelevant states where everyone knew they were going to go. And that's a fair response, but we just keep seeing this in more and more states. It's not just these two states. Maine is another good example. It isn't a swing state other than the second congressional district, but it's certainly a lot closer than those other two states I just listed. And in Maine, the polls had Biden leading anywhere from 10 to 15 percent in most of them, but Biden only ended up winning it by 8.7 percent. Still, this is a pretty big difference. Texas is a really good example of this because Texas is, of course, not a state that you would traditionally think of as a swing state. However, the media and the polls were claiming that it was actually exactly that, and Biden had some chance at winning Texas. You can see here that in some of the polls closest to the election, Biden and Trump were tied in Texas. The average that Real Clear Politics gave Donald Trump was 1.3% in Texas, and he ended up winning it by 5.8%. This is significantly above the margin of error, and Texas is a particularly good example of how bad the polls were, because for West Virginia or Oklahoma, you can say pretty plausibly that those are so small states and it's so clear where they're going that no one really cares about the polls and no one puts much effort into it. But you can't say the same about Texas. It's a very big state, so it's quite relevant. And it's not a swing state, but it's still an uncomfortably close state if you're a Republican, and they do do a lot of polls in Texas for the presidency. So there really just is no excuse here. Why are the polls so wrong? I could show more states if I wanted to to further prove my point, but I think I've made it clear enough already. In the 2020 election, the polls were really wrong, just as they were really wrong in the 2016 election. There's no mistake in it this time. There's no saying that, oh, they actually were kind of right, they were actually were kind of within the margin of error. They were just totally wrong, both times. And we even see this exact same phenomenon separated from Trump. For example, the main Senate race was supposed to be very close. The Democrat was ahead, actually. But Susan Collins ended up very easily winning her seat. She won it actually by almost 10%. So why is it that the polls in America are so wrong? I know a lot of conservatives are going to want me to just say, well, it's just because the people that are running the polls are lying. And that could be a possibility, and it's a possibility we should take seriously. But I want to investigate, like, why are they doing that? And what are the other possibilities? Again, the most common explanation among conservatives is that this is just a way to demoralize conservatives. In 2016, this wasn't really a well-known phenomenon. There wasn't nearly as much distrust in polls among conservatives, so it did really seem depressing, and it did really seem like Trump didn't have a great shot of winning when all the polls were saying that Clinton was going to win. Though it's also quite possible that in the 2016 election, this actually backfired against the left and depressed left-wing voter turnout 
because left-wingers assumed that there was just no way that Hillary Clinton could possibly lose. But if that's the case, why are the pollsters even still doing this? It's practically a dogma on the right now that the polls are not to be trusted. Any demoralization that might have been possible in the 2016 election of the right, I think, is almost entirely gone at this point. I know that I've found it quite hard to explain to conservatives that at least polls in other countries are generally accurate. They usually just dismiss them and say, no, the polls are never accurate. So I really don't think that even if it was effectively demoralizing conservatives at one point, that it's still having that same effect. So maybe the, the pollsters are just lying possibility is the case, but even if that is the case, it seems like a really stupid tactic, and I don't think it's one that, if it ever was effective, is going to be effective, and has been in this last election. Another possibility is that Trump supporters are just really hard to poll, and for whatever reason, it's difficult to get honest answers from people that were voting for Trump. This is the classic shy Tory effect, that because the Republicans are the less socially acceptable party. People are often unwilling to tell pollsters who they're really voting for. And in addition to that, I know that when Academic Agent was talking about this on Twitter a couple weeks back, there were several American conservatives who said that they always lie to pollsters whenever they're given the opportunity to just mess up their polls. However, I have no idea if that's a common tactic, so I don't know if that's possible that that has significantly affected the polls. So, I don't know, it could be some combination of any of these things. But what seems so strange to me about the shy Tory possibility is, again, as I've mentioned, polls in other countries are generally pretty close to correct. So if these pollsters in all these other countries have managed to figure it out and get correct polls and managed to get people to admit to voting for parties that are not necessarily always very socially acceptable, why is this so much more pronounced in America? One possibility could be that the cultural divide in America is just that much bigger than in most other Western countries, between the left and the right. I, of course, don't live in either America or Europe, so I can't really tell if this is the case. But perhaps that's a possible explanation. But whatever the explanation for this is, what is absolutely clear at this point is the polls in America simply cannot be trusted. Thanks for watching. Please remember to donate on Subscribestar or Patreon if you enjoy this content, and remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and share these videos with anyone who you think will enjoy them. And a special thanks to my donors, Emmett Vestry, The Right Cafe, Yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Quo Pregranator, Haxorius, Adzutko, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringewalker, Zian Harris, Thomas Thomist, Windowlick, and Augustine. Thank you everyone again for watching, and goodbye.